Aside from smoking some resistors, in this video I take a look at how you use resistors in everyday projects. So very quickly, there's a couple of types of resistors that you'll probably deal with. These are through-hole resistors. Uh, they have colour bands on them that tell you a little bit about the resistor, including the resistor value measured in ohms. This is a circuit board. The little s squares that you see, the gold in the centre and silver on the edge, with C next to them, they are surface mount type resistors. This is a biscuit. Resistors are typically measured in ohms, but biscuits are typically measured in mms. If we take a look at a simulated circuit that doesn't have an LED, we have a power supply coming through the breadboard, down a few traces, and over to the actual LED, through the LED, and down to ground to complete our circuit. So if we power up this simulation, you'll see that the LED's pretty much blown straight away and the power supply is set to 5 volts and it was pushing about 900 milliamps way too much for an LED so we dial down and you can actually see at 0 volts the LED is not illuminated at 1.8 volts it's starting to illuminate and very low amperage at 2 volts we're pulling about 16 milliamps which is close to the threshold of the LED and at 2.4 volts too much uh, current is going through and the LED is now blown so if we do the same thing, but we actually replace the trace with a resistor. Here's a resistor. Put this in the circuit, and we'll set this resistor to a uh, 1000 ohm value. 1000 ohms, power up, and start turning up the voltage. So as you can see here, already up to 2 volts, it's barely even illuminated now, and the amperage is very low, very low current. So head up a bit higher, 3.4 volts, a little bit more brightness, still looking at a nice low current draw. 8 volts, way above what we were before, 9 volts, and we're getting a nice red colour, and it's only drawing 7.2 milliamps. So 10 volts, 12 volts, pushing it right through, there's 19 volts and 17 milliamps, close to the 20 limit of the LED, and it's nice and red in colour, nice and bright. So if we increase the voltage and continue to push more voltage and current through, there you go, you can see we're over the 20 milliamps, around 22 volts, and the LED's blown. So, what if we change our circuit, and instead of a 1000 ohm resistor, we've only got a 100 ohm resistor? Does that make much of a difference? Okay, so we've now got a 100 ohm resistor running in our circuit, and the LED's blown at 5 volts, because it's pushing out nearly 30 milliamps. So wind down, and there you go, at 0 volts, no colour in the LED. At around 2 volts, uh, we're getting some colour, but that's not where you really want it to be. At around 3.4 volts, you're pushing 15 milliamps, and it's a nice bright red colour. And 4 volts, it's blown, 4.2 volts, and that's because, again, the amperage is simply too high. So that's a simulated example of using a resistor in a circuit and not using a resistor. But what about in the real world? Let's take a look. Okay, so in this first experiment, uh, I have a, multi, a uh, power supply hooked up to the uh, breadboard and positive and negative rail there. I have the power coming through. I'll remove this resistor and I'll just have the power going straight through my little multimeter here. Uh, this is hooked up to measure the amperage going through a small red LED. So what I want to demonstrate here is actually how much uh, power uh, in wattage in total, it actually takes to cook an LED before we actually put a resistor in line. Power up. Okay, 0.25 of an amp at 12 volts, that probably won't last very long. Alright, it's already flickering, already flickering. I'll dial down the voltage. And as you can see, the LED is brightening. So right there we're talking... 3 volts, All right, let's go straight through to 5 volts, it's still bright, I'm not looking all that happy. The amperage on this particular setup is cranked all the way up to maximum, so I'm allowing 5 amps, but obviously it won't draw that. 
So on the meter, we're talking 38 milliamps, and we've got five volts, so 38 milliamps at five volts. Keep cranking. It's still going, but it's not the typical red that you would see. And we're talking 60 milliamps going through. Uh, it's just dropping a little bit, but around 60 milliamps going through that LED at 12 volts. And if we just push it through, a couple of flickerings, flicker, 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 15, 16 volts, and poof, there it goes. Okay, so in this example, uh, you can probably see that I've got the same setup as before, but I now have this resistor. Okay, so power on. And I'm going to crank the amperage again all the way up to the maximum possible. So that's turned all the way up. So let's just start to dial up this voltage. All right, so we know we're getting some illumination on that LED, and that's 3.6 volts, and we're getting one milliamp going through the actual circuit. So the LED is nice and protected by that resistor. And the resistor is a quarter watt resistor, uh, and so they're rated in wattage, so this one's a quarter watt resistor, um, not even getting warm at this stage. So what if we go back up to our something semi-serious 12 volts? Okay, so we now have 12 volts going through to through the LED, but because of the resistor, we're only getting nine, almost 10 milliamps. So very, very low total wattage. And as you can see, the LED is a nice red color, uh, the way it's supposed to be, and not in any danger of burning out. And the resistor, still almost cold to the touch. Uh, they do get hot, but you need a bit more power going through than that. So that's what we'll do now. Let's crank the power up. Okay, so there's 22 volts. Again, the LED didn't last anywhere near that long last time, and it's still got a nice red color. Uh, we have 19, almost 20 milliamps going through the actual circuit at the moment, and the resistor is getting quite warm. So almost too hot to touch. So what if we really give it some juice? Okay, so that's almost 30 milliamps at 30 volts going through the entire circuit. LED still completely happy, but that resistor is not very happy. That will be getting very, very warm right about now. Okay, so what I've just done here is swapped over the resistor. It was a one kilohertz resistor, one kilo ohm resistor before. I've now swapped it over for a 39 ohm resistor, much lesser of a value. And I don't think this one will stand up to anywhere near as much torture. So let's start, start winding up the voltage and we'll whip quickly up to 12. Again, maximum possible current available. So there's 12 volt. You can see the big difference in the color of that resistor and we're pulling 100 milliamps as opposed to maxing it out before at about 30. All right, and yep, that's already starting to get quite hot, um, but we will just go for broke and see what happens. Oof, straight away, burned out. Uh, and obviously because of the less resistance that was available through that resistor, uh, much higher current uh, was being, or much higher wattage was trying to be pumped through that resistor. It's still rated at a quarter watt and it can't take that amount of total wattage going through and it burned out quite quickly as you can see. All right, so in this example, I've got the uh, power supply hooked up ready to go. And again, I'll just dial up five amps. I'll leave the voltage down low. Uh, I have two one kilo ohm resistors, 1000 ohms each. And in between the two, I have this one wire coming off. And this is actually demonstrating what's called a voltage divider. Now I'll hook this up to the multimeter, uh, the other ends to a common ground, and hook this up to the multimeter and actually read uh, the voltage. And we should be able to see that whatever we dial in on the power supply, pretty much because these two uh, resistors are of equal value, we're splitting the difference equally. So this will be half whatever we set on the, multi on the power supply. Let's just try it out. Let's dial up to six volts. Okay, so there's six volts. 
and we're reading 3.98 in between the two resistors here. Alright, so let's try 9 volts, 10 volts. Okay, so there you go, there's 10 volts and we're getting 6 volts out on the meter. Alright, one more. So 18 volts there and we're getting 10 volts out from this center pin between the two resistors. So this is a way of demonstrating two resistors as a voltage divider. So you can take a mains power or a typical common uh, power supply going into your project and you can extract different voltages from it and you can stabilize this with, with a capacitor. But you can extract different voltages through your project just by using two resistors. Now that technically should be 9 volts, not 10. So I dare say one of these resistors isn't a 1K. I'll just check that now. Okay, so that one's spot on. 1 kilo ohm. And that one's also 1 kilo ohm. So there was some other resistance, possibly in this wiring, prior to getting to the first resistor. And that's why the exact voltage wasn't, uh, so I wasn't getting exactly half on here from what I was putting in. In this example, there's actually two 1000 ohm resistors, but instead of getting 2000 ohms resistance, because they're hooked up in parallel, you get half of that, and that's because the current's got more paths to take, therefore 500 ohms. And in this example, the two 1000 ohm resistors are actually hooked up in uh, series, therefore it's 1000 plus 1000, giving you a total of 2000 ohms resistance. So thanks very much for joining me and watching the show. Subscribers are always welcome, so feel free to subscribe. That would be great. And I hope you'll join me again next week.